Uh, okay. Uh, you you took a picture of it. Will you email it to me whenever you get a chance? Um, you know, figure it out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hello. I'm sorry that happened. It was a shit show last week, and I was telling everybody who made it there. Um, so sorry about that because I kept telling them I didn't want to do that, and they basically made me do it. So sorry. So here we are. This is where class will be. Good. We made it. We found out this place exists. And okay. Um, so this week we have our first writing assignment due Friday. We're gonna go over it so that I can set you up for success. This is all. This is in Blackboard. Um, it's all on there. But I want to go over it, and I'm, <laughs> we're gonna show you some writing examples, and you're gonna tell me what's good or bad about them. Sound good? So the goal is so that you learn what to do and what not to do, so that your first paper is good. Okay? Um, so I'm trying to set you guys up for success. All right. So there's an attachment on here. It's PDF. Um, you have to read part of that. Um, it's not too long, but give yourself time. Do it earlier in the week. Um, and it'll help you out a little bit with some things that you should be doing. Your paper is a persuasive paper, okay? Two to four pages, um, double space. Um, I'll turn it in to be a safe assign, which um, means you have to cite your references because it tells me if you do or not. It tells, it tells me if you plagiarized or not. Pretty sweet, right? Nice. The problem is if, um, if we do this later in the semester, it'll pull your paper. It'll be like, they plagiarized it. And I can look at it and I'm like, oh, it's their paper. It's okay. Makes sense. It's pretty hilarious. So I, I always review it and just like, I don't, it gives me a percentage and I don't immediately think, oh my gosh, they plagiarized everything. I'll go look and it'll show me the source. So as long as you cite it, you're good to go. And we'll go over that. Okay. Um, so turn it in via Blackboard. We we'll use APA citations. Again, we'll touch on that again if you need to. Uh, make sure you cite other work and we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, here's a help, uh, a link for that'll help you cite APA. There are other websites. I think there's one called Cite This For Me, or something like that. You can find them. Just double check because you can like put in the article or the book or the author or whatever, and it will make a citation for you. However, double check it because it may have things spelled wrong. It may not have stuff included, like the year it was written or whatever stuff like that. So don't just trust it completely if you use a resource like that. Cool. <laughs> and if you copy and paste from that, fix your formatting, because like I can tell. I'm like, oh my god, they're, they're too lazy to even like fix it. Okay, so don't do that. Sound good? Okay. Um, you need to use journal journal articles, books um, on the subject. Don't use Wikipedia, right? Um, and we'll see in some of the examples of, of some other things not to do. Okay. Uh, the the SAM website is a really good resource, and Google Scholar, not just Google, but Google Scholar, is a really good resource. You can set things by years, blah, blah, blah. Anything that you find or whatever um, should be free. If it's trying to make you pay for it, some of them it's like you gotta pay a small fee. Don't do that, okay? There's, there's a million research articles out there. I promise you, you can find stuff, okay? So don't, don't do anything that you have to pay for. Um, you're gonna choose a topic of your choosing, right? So you're gonna choose what you wanna write about as long as it's related to agriculture, which is really broad, right? That's food you eat, um, what you drink, right? If you wear clothes, everybody does? Yeah, okay, then, then it's related to ag, okay? Um, and you're gonna need to persuade the reader about that topic, okay? Either for or against, doesn't matter, I don't care. So let's use the example that a lot of students write about is organic food, okay? If you're convincing the reader that they need to eat organic food only, then do that, okay? It should be clear that you are convincing me, as the reader, that you want me to eat organic food, okay? So whatever your topic is, give it some thought, um, and you're gonna persuade the reader to do that, or not do that. Or if you, if you don't want me to eat organic food ever, then tell me that, okay? Make it clear, you're trying to persuade the reader of something, all right? Um, what else did I write? And it's broad, all the stuff you can cover. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of topics to choose from. Sorry. Uh, what else? I have a question on that. Yeah, there's some I was looking for. Don't lose your question. Uh, I was trying to see if I put it in here or not. Okay. Uh, all right, what's your question? Um, on the attachment for the persuasive stuff. Yes. Um, on the first like I forgot what it's called. I had it, but I forgot. Uh -huh. um, its examples include um, illustrations. Okay. Are we? Is that something that 
I'd rather you didn't. Okay. If you have like graphs or anything you want to put in there, they don't, you can't write like three paragraphs and tell me it's a four page paper because you put a bunch of graphs in there, right? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. If you want to include anything like that, it needs to be after the paper. Okay. So if you have like a graph you want to show or something, just mention it um, and then you include it with your references or after, but it doesn't count in the length of your paper. Two to four pages is not a lot, okay? With that being said, it has to get a, the point across. Right? That's not very long. The two pages is not very long to get your point across of what you want me to do. Um, one thing, well, well let me, let's go to the examples and then I'll, I'll show you. You see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just um, one of the things on here, we touched on a couple of these last week. Um, but like if you write about PETA or GMO or NGO or those things, you have to spell it out the first time. Assume the reader has no idea what you're talking about. Right? Um, if you need help, honestly, ask your roommate. Like, read it. I know they don't want to read anything, okay? Or a friend or a family member. Have them read it for five minutes. It takes five, ten minutes. If they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, you got work to do, okay? If it doesn't make sense to them, you got work to do, all right? Um, one of the things you guys are really guilty of, I'm just lumping, I'm not saying you do this, but students in general, you guys will write, I believe or I think. Don't do that. Of course that's what you believe or think. You're the author. Just be direct, say it, okay? The academic writing example that we, that we had to read last week, you won't see that in there anywhere. Okay. Um, so we already know it's you, so just just come out and say it. Um, again, check your formatting when you're done. All right? Make sure everything looks good. And use that academic writing example. That will also help you with citations. Cool? Questions? Okay. I didn't put this in PowerPoint because it doesn't show up as well. All right, so read that and let's tell me what you think. What do we think? This is the opening paragraph, by the way. This is the introduction. It's so wordy, too wordy, and it doesn't, there's, it's not really saying anything. <laughs> Thank you. What else? It's very informal. Yeah, right? This is totally informal. This is, this is more like a text than a paper. Various thing is meant with things. Yeah. Where? Things. Various things. Yeah. Okay. Now, how many of you want to keep reading this paper? Does anyone? This sounds awful, right? I have to, to read them all. It makes me angry. I don't really get angry. It just makes me frustrated. Is this first sentence even necessary? No. No, why, Louise? Because they, like, I mean. We're talking about animal cruelty and the things that happen to animals, not. You're not Louise. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, like you said, history of various things and how everything was going to start. Okay. It's awful, right? <laughs> Yeah, this is totally, it put me to sleep already. The opening sentence of the paper, I, was, I don't want to read this. Okay, so don't do that, okay? Just be direct, come out and say it. I know you're writing a paper. If someone's reading it, they know you're writing a paper. You don't have to tell me you're writing a paper, okay? Who was going to do that? Yeah, my man, thank you for being honest. Some of you were, some of you were going to do this. I'm trying to help you, right? Believe it or not, okay. Good, yeah. This is not good, all right? This <laughs> Um, I will also express how many people argue about different things that are done to animals. Are you going to express that? How are you going to express that? Through song? Right? Interpretive dance? No, I'm going to tell you. Right? And even that it doesn't make, this is not good. Okay? Uh, unfortunately, many don't, many what? Many don't like some of the things that are done to animals, which creates an argument. What? We just said, you said argue twice, back to back. I don't even know why. There will never be a time everyone will agree on something, so there will always be conflict. Is that redundant? I just said the same thing twice in the same sentence. Okay? Please don't do this to me. All right? I'm trying to help you. Okay. So that was no good. You see that one? Okay. In the second one here. Is this another introductory? Yes, these are all opening paragraphs. Good question.
good thing. Grammatical, yeah, kind of. Those are pretty, pretty easy. Huh? Right, yeah. We. <laughs> okay, what else? What else did we say? Did I hear repetitive? Yeah, okay, repeating words, what else? You should, yeah. Yeah, exactly, okay. Also, how do we know? Who, be who believes any of this? It's pretty general. We're using the same words over and over again, and there's zero proof. We have no idea, right? And I'm pretty sure they're talking about Texas if they're talking about coastal and Bahia grass. I'm just guessing here. Um, but we started out talking about the United States. You can narrow it down, that's fine, but he doesn't, he or she does not do that in this paragraph, okay? Um, that, this whole second sentence is really long and awkward, right? <laughs> the two grasses may be the most common. He just told us they're the most common. So these are the most common, now we're not sure. The second sentence later, it's right like, after. Oh crap, I didn't sign it. What's that? He's like, oh crap, I didn't sign it. Right, exactly, all right. Um, and most surely outpasses the uh, outpasses? Does that make sense? Is it a quarterback? Okay, all right. This is what happens when you guys don't proofread or think about it. You just write your paper and you turn it in, right? Please don't do that to me, okay? Because this is the crap that you turn in. Okay, give it a little more effort. All right, next one. Yes, ma'am. So when we're writing ours, you said there's nothing to like back that like paragraph up. There's no way that we can believe it. So when we write ours, do we need to put like citations? Yes. Um, from our intro paragraph and everything. Yeah, we'll touch on that. So intro. That's a good question. Okay, introduction paragraph. You probably still should have citations. Okay. Um, not. They don't always work into the intro. But if you're introducing a topic, fine. You introduce the topic. But if you start talking about something that you're trying to prove then you need to back it up. So you, you, you have to be able to prove it. If, so say this is your opening paragraph, fine, you're talking about these being the two most common types, there better be a citation there. Because I have no reason to believe that this author is, knows what they're talking about. Right? Because they automatically question themselves in the second one. Right? So yeah, you're gonna need citations. And we'll get into what kind, because there's some uh, more examples in here that are not so great. All right, next one. Yeah. The citation isn't correct. We need more on the. There's not even a citation. Now we quote him. That's fine. But him or her. And it, he's dismissing the date and. Yeah, he he needs to now. It's like a narrative citation. Yes. Okay. Which is not APA. Right. This isn't even MLA. Okay. You can do this. You can introduce it. This is not. This is not a bad thing to talk about your article. Okay. Our cows climate killers by this guy or girl. I don't even know. All right. That's fine, you're talking about the article, you're introducing it. You still have to cite it if you quoted it. You still have to include the citation, right, at the end. Um, good, what else? Punctuation. Which, what, what book? Doesn't need a... Yeah, what about cause? Why is that in parentheses? Yeah. This is also something that you guys are guilty of. You, you know, like, if you're talking to your friend, you might say cause, you might do that, okay, like you're Dr. Evil or whatever. Um, but that's a really dated reference. That movie's like 20 years old now. Okay. Um, there's no reason to do this unless there's a citation. If I see this, I'm going to wonder why it's not cited. I'm like, why is that in quotations? Okay. Um, so you just need to write more formally. That's like if you were talking to your friends. Uh, what else? What else do you guys notice? Right. Not you. Hold on. <laughs> Who else? What's that? The first sentence. Oh my gosh, that's long, isn't it? Many people in today's society have put regulations on rules and ranchers. Has any people put rules and regulations on ranchers? No. Organizations have, right? But many people, so just 200 million Americans decided to 
regulate ranchers? No, right? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, good, what else? Yes, yeah, it does. All right. Also, good. Cows release methane gas in their digestive system that then later, do you need both of those words? No. On, get dispersed onto the ground in their digestive system. So, I mean, I guess we're talking about cows crapping, which is fine, right? Um, and move into the air, causing pollution and what people also think to, the, to be global warming. Oh. There's a lot going on there that's not good, right? And how do any of you know what people think? No. You don't. So don't generalize unless you can prove it. You can't just make broad statements about what people believe or think without backing it up. Right? Even if you know it. Okay? Even if you're like, look, most people in Texas don't like PETA. You're probably right. <laughs> okay? But you still have to prove it. Okay? Because you don't know. All right? Is there anything else? Oh, here too. This is what you guys also tend to do a lot. This has been a major controversial topic lately. According to who? If I let you guys pick a topic because I hope, one, you enjoy it, and two, you actually learn something about it. But a lot of times you guys know some stuff about it, and you just make assumptions. Or you, or you who grew up on a ranch? Okay, You guys have learned a ton of stuff about ranching, and you will just say it. It doesn't make it true. You still got to prove it. That makes sense? Okay, so you can't, you might know that this is true, whatever they're trying to say, all right? You still have to prove it. Make sense? Okay. Um, you can't just say it's a, it's a popular topic or it's a hot topic. You have to prove that or don't say it. Okay. Uh, a better way to say that would be um, this is a controversial topic. Okay, you can leave it a little more broad, but you, you can't really claim it's a major controversy unless you know or you prove it. Make sense? Cool. All right. Thanks. A little choppy, yeah. What else? Sounds good to me, like in the first sentence. The first two sentences were the best. Yeah. But there, well, so here's the thing. This is not a bad idea, because this kind of pulls you in, right? It's not executed very well, 100%. And the third, we already know that we like steak, okay? We're on the right track that we like steak. Does he need to say, I love steak? No. no. Nope. Don't care, right? We already got that figured out. This isn't a necessarily bad way to start to maybe pull me in. Okay? Now, if you're vegetarian, you might not like this, right? But this gets me in the, in the mood of thinking, yeah, I like steak, smells good. Okay, what are we talking about? All right, fair enough, we got a little work to do there. <laughs> Living in today's world, do we need that? Are we sure, right? Where are we talking about? Is this a problem in the whole world? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Some countries don't care, right? They, they don't care. Right? Um, controversy has arisen due to substituting alternative protein sources for meat. Again, a little choppy, a little extra words there. We're kind of getting to where we, you know, we want you to understand. Um, this has become a popular tend, right? Uh, with the message that to be healthy, comma, do you need that comma? No. You must eat a plant-based diet. How do we know? Right? Okay, so then we go on to back it up here. We're working our way. With this type of thing, there's a growing trend of concerns. Uh, consumers choosing meat-free or meat-reduced diets, substituting alternative sources of protein for meat. Got a citation. Okay, we're working in the right direction, right? At least this part is backed up. Eating meat is an important part of a healthy diet. We just shifted gears, right? 
this has to be backed up. And if it's not backed, you could say this without a source, but the next sentence better prove it. Right? So you got to back it up. Um, choosing to eat a balanced diet of both plants and animals is the best way to go to get all the nutrients you need. Probably, but how do we know? There's nothing proving that. Okay, makes sense? So we're, <laughs> we've got some good, I almost said meat on the bone without even trying to be funny, right? Um, so this is a great first draft, and then when you read through that again, you should be like, oh my God, that's not good, right? And then just fix it and make it sound a little better and, and think about it, is this true? Can I prove it, right? Am I backing it up, all right? Next one. Okay, so those are all opening paragraphs. Now we're moving into supporting paragraphs. So after your introduction, you introduce the topic, and by the end of the first paragraph, I should know what you are trying to persuade me to do. Not all the proof is there, but if you're trying to tell me that I need to eat meat, I should know that at the end of the first paragraph. Cool? Not everybody <laughs> understands that. Right? Or just they forget. Okay, read down. Bingo. This is not bad. I don't have to believe any of it. Right? There's nothing proving any of this to be true. Right? If you read some of this and you got it from an article or whatever, even if you're paraphrasing, you gotta include the citation. Okay? Um, but you're right. It's not bad. I know what we're talking about. It flows pretty well. I just have zero reason to believe any of it. Okay? And if you're trying to persuade somebody to do something, you gotta be able to back it up. Cool? Anything else on this one? Right, so again, not only are you working through like making sure it sounds good and everything, but make sure that you, you don't question yourself because you guys will do that often, sometimes without even meaning to, right? If you don't understand what you're citing, you probably don't want to use it. Make sure it's clear or make it clear, right? Paraphrase and make it simpler, right? Um, sometimes people will cite stuff, super technical, science stuff, backed up, data and all this stuff, and they have no idea what it means, right? So just be able to to make it understandable. Okay, next one. Oh, I like this one. On the artificial insemination, he has it twice, but after the initial one, then he should put parentheses and then AI and then use AI from that point forward. Should, yeah. And this is, I just pulled this out, so they may have done it in the introduction. Um, I don't remember, but yeah, it's a good point. If this is the first time that you've mentioned AI, it should be in parentheses right here. Or you can write comma or AI. Um, yeah, you're right. And if it's the start of a sentence, you still need to spell it out. Okay. What else do we notice? Yeah, it's just like dating. Right, which isn't bad, but are there any citations? No. Not till we get to the bottom, and there shouldn't be two at the end of the last sentence. So they may have used two sources for this, fine, they just didn't put them in the right places, okay. But what else do we notice? What do we think about this Italian dude and Ivanov? All we have is a last name. We know nothing about them, right? So, well, we do know he's a physiologist, so that helps a little bit, he or she. We've only got one name, right? But when I see this stuff, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, were you alive in 1780? 
No, right? So how do you know? You got it from somewhere. Just tell me where you got it from. Cool? Um, um, and if you bring up a name, we, okay, I guess it tells you he's a scientist. Spell that out, all right? If, if Ivanov is a scientist, first name, as much background credentials as you can. Why do we care what somebody said? That's what you just need to ask yourself. Why do we care what Ivanov said? Tell us who Ivanov is. All right, tell the reader. Um, pretty long and wordy there, right? What else? Local. Yeah, we local. And then fifty percent of that sentence is a train wreck. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, what was the other part? Uh, because what does it say? Yeah, couldn't go very far back then. Again, yeah, it's, it's not really your fault, but most of you guys think about the world that's been the last twenty years, because that's when you were alive, right? So something that happened forty years ago, you think was forever ago, which I understand, but it's really not. So keep that in perspective. Okay? And then the last. Absolutely nothing to do with anything AI. Correct. Yep. So why is that in there? Okay. Um, and we're a little, it's okay, but we're also all over the globe in this. I think we're giving a history, which isn't bad, but this is pretty choppy and not really cited well, right? Cool. Anything else in that one? I have to read all these papers. That's why you guys feel my pain. I know Did you like. You excerpts of your actual papers? Yeah, these are student written papers. Okay, next one. Nice and short for you. <laughs> what do we think? What is this? <laughs> what is what this? Is right? Good. Excellent. Thank you. I ask myself that all the time. Okay? Or things, right? Uh, good. What else? No citations. No citations. Good. What else? This is an entire paragraph. The fact that it's an entire paragraph. Right. Three sentences, right? Nothing is proven. No, I, don't, I don't have to believe any of this. Okay? So, not, not real strong there, right? Even if it's true, not a strong paragraph. Okay? Good. Excellent. Well, this was longer. So, yeah, shit. Set you up with a short one. Yeah. Okay. What is this a trustworthy source? No. Probably not. And this, if you just Google stuff, this is what happens. You get things that I have no known author, right? And they usually have an agenda. Do you think organic consumer is a neutral source? You think they're biased? A hundred percent, right? Okay. Um, which is fine, okay? If you want to use that as an example, just be careful how you do it. It shouldn't be this, the example you use that's a good example, right? If you want to say organic consumer brings this up, they don't tell the whole truth. Here's what's really the deal, okay? Then cite it and prove it. All right, good. <laughs> what else? Could you use some commas and some phrases? Yeah. Um, 
So we're trying to prove it, not bad, decent length of a, of a good supporting paragraph. We've got some data in there and everything. Is this way too wordy? Yes, right? Uh, where do we even get? With this being said by the FDA, do you need that at all? Mm. No, just say, therefore, hormones are not, uh, are not gonna hurt people, right? Be direct, that you don't need to use a bunch of, I don't care about your word count. I care that you persuaded me. I care that you changed my mind, all right? Or gave me good data. All right. I have a uh, question. Yes, ma'am. If you're making like a statement like that, like if we were to say something like, therefore, uh, it, hormones are not there to hurt a human, mm -hmm. wouldn't you have to back that up because you were making a statement? You just did. Or stuff before it? You can do it in either order, but okay. somewhere in there it should be proven. Okay. Okay, so what they're, you, they're recapping basically. Okay, so the FDA says it's good, it's out of them, therefore hormones are not going to get in your, are not getting human consumption. Okay, so you can or have you claim ordered. something a second time if you've already proved it. Sure. In your paragraph. Okay. Yep. Yep. I don't really care the order, but I'm going to question it if there's no proof. Right? So it's you've got to have proof in there. Okay? Uh, again, in all reality, <laughs> not necessary, right? What people do not really realize is that cattle have to go through a withdrawal period. You already knew that? Rancher, right? You already knew that, didn't you? Okay, so you automatically are eliminated by what she's saying. It doesn't apply to you. Yeah, but she also says that they don't have to go through a withdrawal period. <laughs> right, yeah, to get a little contradictory again here. But you can't just say what all people, and a lot of you guys, because you just kind of generalize, and you think people either know it or they don't. You can't do that unless you have proof, because you can't. You don't know what all people think. But how, what if you like don't have proof, but you know? Like, for instance, I lived on a... Uh, 85,000 head block or feed yard mm -hmm. in Nebraska, and I know that they have withdrawal periods. I know that their chicks tell you every single thing, yeah. but how do I say there's, that? I bet there's probably 500 research articles that will tell you that same thing. There's so much research out there that will tell you there is a withdrawal period. Here's how we know. So you just have to find that research. Okay, so, but if even if, if you know it's something it. that you know and something that say you can't because it's like a personal practice of that business or something like how do you make it fair question then you would have to then you would have to bring up how you know okay. specifically okay i worked on a cattle ranch i know this okay i worked on a feed lot i know this i'm still maybe going to question you but if you tell me about or i worked on a feed lot for 10 years all right okay i'm getting a little more credibility but i guarantee again there's a million articles out there from feedlot operations. There's, there's like almost nothing is untouched with research. Again, COVID is too new, so don't worry about it. I know it's impacting show barns and things that you guys do. I get it. Um, we just don't have enough research to write about it yet. Not for, not for a research paper anyway, or persuasive paper. Cool. Other questions? It's good questions. You guys didn't know you're gonna have to come to class and read, huh? Yes, sir. What if you learned it from your grandfather, can you just cite, put in a, like a citation that says grandfather? If you, if it's from a personal experience, yes, you can work it in. But I'm still probably gonna question what makes it valid. So you still have to prove it, okay? So if grandfather did something that you guys do on the farm or the ranch, that's fine. But you still probably need to go, or you could bring up. Uh, if you literally can't find anything, you can mention that too, <laughs> okay? You know, a grand, what my grandfather's practice from our family op operation was X, Y, Z. I still bet you can find information about it, good or bad. Right. Yes, ma'am. Where it says in all reality what people do not realize, like what it, instead of being so general, just saying like all people, would it just sound better if you said like some people? Some. If you, if you don't know, right? Um, then you need to be a little more generic, okay? Because you, you can't prove what all people think. Um, you might say some believe or consumers have indicated. Again, there's usually data out there that will tell you what they believe. Right? Um, it's not always great. Sometimes it's bad data. You can use that too. If, it, if you think it's wrong, um, which we'll get into more in the semester, if you think it's wrong, then you can bring it up and question it. Good question. What else? Okay, last one of a supporting paragraph.
What do you got? Why is Right, yeah, that, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, good. So not quite cited correctly. Close, we got a source. We're trying, right? I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. What else? There's a lot of different ideas. <laughs> right? What the hell are we talking about in this paragraph? You can, they're a little related, right? And if you're reading the whole paper, maybe so. Is there a lot going on here? Yes. Right? Uh, the bottom stuff, all right, we, we totally shift gears into what women and children are doing in countries that we're not sure about. Is this sexist? Maybe. Right? How do we know? Right? There's no proof in there. Okay, what else? Good. It does not, right? It may have earlier, but excellent point. Okay. What else? The 90%. The 90%. How many GMO crops are there in this country? Does anybody know? 11. 11. There's two types of corn, I think. So it's like 10, really. So whoever this is, I am immediately questioning it. Now, they may have meant of the 11 GMO crops, 90% are. You can understand that, okay? And you can also get into an argument, right? Genetically modified may not have taken place in a lab. We modified corn centuries ago, right? So I can get into that argument with you, right? If I wanted to. I'm going to question it, right? So you got a source. Sorry, I say all right too much. All right, okay. You guys need to tell me to stop doing this. Tap your head. It's a prop word. Where? Which one? The same thing. About 90% of the crop farmers. Yes. Yeah, not so great. We but spelled out United States. Good job. On okay. the 90%, I thought on percentages we were supposed to do it as a percent. Is that not? Uh, for numbers, if it is um, less than 10, you can do it either way. Um, if it's less than 10, you uh, spell it out. Even percentages? Usually, okay. yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I couldn't tell you percentages. Uh, I'm not going to lose my mind if you wrote 90% as numerical. Versus this either way. Uh, what else? The lysinage should not have uh, like the comb in front of the hand, I think. In these countries, children and women are typically the form of women. Oh, last and spring women. This ends the last one? Mm -hmm. The collar and or women. Right here, it's countries, children, and women. Um, actually, there's a there's an argument over this. You can go either way. To be honest, I never put a comma if it's if there's three of them and it's and. Oh, no, 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 no. If it's spreading for weeds instead of using manual labor will allow families to send their kids to school. Very comma and women to find another source mm -hmm. to support the family. Um, or is that last sentence more like after the end? I, I almost never put one after it. Again, you're, there's a rule you can argue. It's called Oxford comma. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I don't get too hung up on that, but yeah. Um, but we're a little all over the place with the topic, right, from where we shifted and what, what we're talking about down here. Aren't they like, I mean, there are run ons. Like, there's really long sentences that can yeah. be better broken up. So, again, even if you went out and did this and you got some good information, it's in there, I could tell. Just go back and fix it. Right? Um, and you're going to hopefully realize that this should be two paragraphs because we're talking about two different things. Cool. All right, so here's some conclusions. And what happens is you guys get done with your paper. You're like, oh, I'm almost done. And you turn this out. Right? Reactions is entertaining to this. What do we notice? I realize you haven't read the paper. What do you notice? Well, you can't not understand the, if the numbers can't not be important and then be obvious that they're saying something. <laughs> right. Totally con contradicting itself, right? Okay, what else? Because not only. Yeah, okay, why? I'm not sure why that is two sentences. Does this, does this summarize anything for you? No. No, okay. 
It's just something that, what a lot of you guys do, actually, some of you guys will write an excellent conclusion that should have been your opening paragraph. Because you get done, you have all this information, and then you'll write a really strong conclusion. I'm like, oh, that's great. It tells me what you were talking about. It tells me what you wanted me to do. It's, it's persuasive. It introduces the topic. And I'll tell you, you should have made this your opening paragraph. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so we got, some, we got some issues, and we're totally, we totally, whether you know what all these numbers and averages mean or not. So if you just told me a bunch of numbers, shouldn't I understand them? He's just discrediting, he or she, is totally just discrediting what they wrote about. You just threw it all out the window at your conclusion, right? Okay. I think we only have a few more. We're almost done torturing you. Ugh. the subject right it's a little playful maybe not the best for an academic paper right a little playful not some bad points hopefully which probably didn't happen if it was the same one from hopefully that's been proven okay you may not have hardly any citations in your conclusion that's fine you're summarizing right but I hope to hell that you proved all these things otherwise this is worthless right but not great without anything so you else. You don't have to recite anything in your conclusion? Some do. Some, if, if you wrote a good paper and you persuaded me, you probably don't. But what you should never do in your conclusion is have a new topic. Yeah, sometimes you guys will get to the end, right? And um, let's sit like the, the kids going to school, all right? If, that, if you just introduce that at your conclusion, you know, it's like genetically modified crops are good, we need them, Everything's okay, and you just prove that in your paper, and then your last sentence was, also women and kids can go to school if we spray weeds. If that's the first time you mention it, it's in the conclusion, that's not good. Because now you just open up a new door, and I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Anything else? Mm, Bio for growing PALB serving, I feel like that's like uh, for like a commercial right. or something. <laughs> right. Again, I don't mind if you're, if you're trying to make it entertaining and pull the reader in, because people don't like reading. You guys haven't even enjoyed this, right? This is entertaining shit. Being honest, okay. Um, most people don't. Because based on your on the um, persuasive thing that you had at the beginning, I mean that does fit in with what it's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Sure. So again, if you're on topic, it's okay, and if you're proving the point, that's okay. Um, you just better have proved all that stuff already. All right. I think we only have a couple more. This is, it's 11.55, and the assignment's due in four minutes. That's one sentence. One sentence was the conclusion of an entire paper. That's a four-line one sentence. Uh-huh. Please don't do this. <laughs> this is like, holy shit, I gotta turn it in. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You, right? Please you, don't do that. Huh? When you read, do you sit like, do you get out of breath? Like, when I read, I read out loud. So, mm. like, I'm talking about, <laughs> that's how I know when it's done, I'm done, I'm done, I can't finish a breath. Yeah, and actually, reading out loud is a really good habit for when you're proofreading your paper, which nobody does. But if you go back and read it, has anybody been to the writing center on campus? They make you realize how dumb you sound. The, and hundred percent, they make you read your paper out loud. That's how they're helping you. You're like, no, just help me. They'll do that because you'll say stupid things. You're like, that doesn't make sense, right? And that's actually helpful because they'll be like, I don't understand your topic. If they don't live in that world, that's fine. But that tells you the reader has no idea what I'm talking about. So literally read it out loud sometimes. And you're like, oh my gosh, this sounds terrible. It's just a helpful thing to do. Uh, so please give yourself time, right? Uh, okay, last one. Yep. Not even a whole sentence. Right. 
You guys are good, see? I'm trying to help you. Don't do this. Okay? This is, this is painful. I have to read 21 of them. Right? And I, uh, multiple, when I was doing it only online, I would have like three sections. So I'd be reading like 60 papers. So bear, I, I try to stay up on grading, but bear with me because sometimes it takes me a while. Because right? I actually read your papers. Okay? Is this a good conclusion? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so I've shown you guys what not to do. Right? And I've shown you what to do in the academic paper. So you got until Friday. All right? So be thinking about your topic. You've got the reading to do. It's not very long, but it will help you. So actually read it um, and persuade somebody to do something. Um, something that can be helpful with this if you don't know what you're going to write about. Think about things you like or don't like. Think about rumors in ag. Um, things that you've heard that you just know aren't true. If you actually know them, you still got to go prove it. Um, or if there's something you would like to learn more about. There's literally something you're like, I'm not real strong in this. Um, I want to learn a little more about it. If you know nothing about GMOs or whatever, then go figure it out. Right? Um, what questions do we have? I, no, sorry, yes. I'm very, like, I like to know every single thing. Um, on your deal, it says, where is it saying it? Right it says on the double space except for the high the, the heading, heading, yes. Don't spread your heading out like it's going to add a whole half a page to your paper. But I thought in APA the entire paper is... Usually page. there's like a title page. I don't care. I don't need it. If you want to make a title page, go for it. Um, but you don't have to. I don't care. It doesn't count. Just what irritates me is when people like to spread their heading out really far. Because it's their name and their date and then the class and then maybe what county you live in. And then, you know, <laughs> all, what kind of car you drive. I thought it was an MLA though. Right. Um, so I, really, I don't care about the heading. I just don't want it to take up a half the paper. Okay. Just it, it tells me that you turned it in. Um, if, if, and just if you screw up on eCampus, you get three choice, three chances. So if you panic, you're like, oh, I submitted the wrong document, just do it again. But after three times, it won't let you. Just because you know accidents happen. Uh, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. For this paper, do you because it's in APA, so do you need to label like introduction or history? Like, you know how they have the that? example has that, but your paper's not that long. If it's helpful to you, if you need to put introduction and then write your paragraph, fine. If you need to do a conclusion, fine. I'm not, I'm not going to grade you down if you do, but you certainly don't need to. The t two to four pages is not very long. That's really short, to be honest. So make it good. Give me a good paper. This is not very long. Um, I just go find the sources. Almost every journal article, <laughs> journal article has an abstract that will tell you quickly what that entire research paper is about. So if you're like, oh, that's helpful, it's on the right topic, then you can spend time going through it. If you read an abstract, you're like, oh, this is not helpful, then move on. Okay. Other questions? If you find a news article, which is common if you don't use like Google Scholar stuff, and it talks about a research study, go find that research study. Try not to use the news article. Make sense? Cool. Anything else? Everyone's going to do a good job and turn it in on time? Promise? Yeah. Scout's honor. I can't do three fingers. All right, um, have a wonderful week. If you have questions, by all means, please email me. Um, and if you missed last week, just make sure you get caught up on that paper. If you have any questions, um, let me know.